Hello everybody, my name is Kador. Welcome to another music collection video, Shazam. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about my tapes. I've gotten a lot of tapes since I last talked about tapes on this channel. So, yeah, I'm going to be going over all of those. Uh, I know I said to go over CDs as well, but uh, I kind of decided against that. It would make the video way too long and uh, various other reasons. Um, I'm just going to do tapes for now. So, what I want to talk about first, though, is this. My tape. Uh, I actually released uh, a tape, a cassette tape of noise on the label Pennsylvanian Hypno Center. And uh, yeah, it's the C20, so 10 minutes on each side. Um, it is released in an edition of 30 copies, and I got 15 of them. So uh, I'll leave information in the description of this video uh, if you want to purchase one of these. Uh, basically, just email. Uh, the, the label. Um, I'll include the email address and all that. Uh, you can pay eight dollars, just ask for the tape and he'll send it to you. Um, or if you want, um, you can go to my Bandcamp page. I'll have a link for that as well. And you can listen to the digital version and buy that for four dollars if you want. But anyway, yeah, really cool. Um, really happy to have released it. It is under my project Ether called Fractured Redaction. This is the name of the name of the release, and uh, each copy is different, which is cool. Um, it's either going to be on a white or a black tape, um, two different variants. And I decided to just keep this one for myself because it has like a full sticker on here. But uh, usually they have like smaller, like ripped stickers, so that each one has a different sticker on the tape. So that's pretty cool. And um, the J card folds out like such. So here's like a picture of kind of our setup. So this is um, basically me and my fellow musician who goes with by the name Lindsay. Um, we kind of did a bunch of sessions, noise sessions, improv basically, uh, using like these instruments and objects and whatnot. What direction does this even go? Whatever, yeah. Um, just a bunch of these random things and we made a bunch of noise out of that and then I sort of cut up and edited the, the parts I like and kind of stitched them together. Uh, to make the whole thing, so yeah, it's really neat. Um, and then uh, Henry from the label did the rest of the collage art here. So I am I'm happy about this. I'm happy the way it turned out. It's very um, uh, varying, consistently different noise. Uh, kind of throws a lot at you. Uh, so yeah, I'm really proud of this. So if, if you're interested, definitely check out. Um, you know, listen to the first side on Bandcamp for free. Um, and you can purchase the digital version or get the tape for the label. Blah blah blah. I already talked about that. Cool. So yeah. Anyway, I'm happy about this. Uh, let's move on to the rest of the tapes, though. I know I normally go in chronological order from when I got them, but I got a bunch of these as skeleton dust, so there's kind of pointless. And also, I have them all arranged in alphabetical order, so I'm just gonna go alphabetically, uh, which means that I have to start. With this one, um, this is the tape that was released in the same batch as mine, so it was also released on um, Pennsylvania Hypno Center, and this is a Richard Ramirez, I think that's how you pronounce that, um, side project. I mean, he has like a billion projects, so it's one of his things. Uh, it's pretty cool to release my first tape in the same batch as uh, Richard Ramirez's tape because he's. As far as I'm concerned, he's the inventor of Harsh Noise Wall, and um, just kind of a legendary noise artist in general. Um, so, this is uh, one of his most stupidly named projects though, so, you know, don't get offended or anything, I'm just gonna kinda flash the name there, yep, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is a C3, uh, 15 minutes on each side. The first side is kind of dark ambient noise wall, I guess. Um, I'm not like a huge fan of it really. It's it's a little boring, um, doesn't really grip me too much, uh, doesn't really go anywhere, obviously it's a wall, but it's like not a super gripping texture, but I really like side B to this thing. Um, much more straightforward harsh noise wall, but there's still some variation, you can still tell that he's like doing things to make the wall, and it's not just like a static feedback loop or whatever. So anyway, pretty cool. Um, here is the tape, uh, kind of a similar art style as mine, because it was kind of, you know, made by the same guy and all that. So. Yeah, pretty neat. Oh, I forgot to mention, these are, yeah, these are both limited, well, I said that mine was limited to 30, but they both have, this tape and my tape have a little limitation number there, so you can see what number you got, um, so that's pretty cool. All right, next up is Appropriate Savagery, 
with um, Volume 1, Negligible Grace. So I think this is his first tape. It's called Volume 1, so I would assume so. Uh, this guy is a super underrated, like, underground dark ambient artist, I would, I would say, is the main genre. Like, he also mixes in noise elements and, like, death industrial sometimes. And his album that came out this year, that I'm forgetting the name of for some reason, but uh, the one that came out on Male Activity this year uh, is probably the best dark ambient album I've ever heard. Um, I got this one just because I couldn't find the other one, and I just found this on Skeleton Dust, and I still love this one too. I mean, this is great as well. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do like a top five or top ten albums of the year uh, of, of 2018 list at the end of this year, so I'm sure that'll be on it. Um, I'll talk about it then. But anyway, this guy is this guy really needs more attention. He is one of the best dark ambient artists, if not the best um, that I've heard, and he's just has like no recognition whatsoever. So. This is released on Moral Defeat, which is a really great uh, kind of noise label, that sort of thing. I really love the color of the of the tape. This is like really red. It's probably my favorite color, honestly. Um, and then, yeah, you get the uh, track list and all that. And on the back, you just kind of have this abstract collage. Only 49 copies for this thing, and it's like one of the best freaking dark ambient things I've ever heard. It's ridiculous. It's, it's very like melodic and kind of melancholic dark ambient, uh, if I had to put descriptors like that on it. Um, I will say the one problem with this tape <laughs> is that side B uh, is panned all the way to the left speaker. It's really annoying. I don't know why that is. Um, I guess it was just a, a faulty dub or whatever, but side A is totally fine, and then side B is just completely panned to the left. So. That's kind of annoying. It came with a digital download, so at least I have that. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, that makes the tape, uh, at least the side B, not not really listenable. <laughs> I mean, you can still listen to it, but it's just like, you know, it's much better to listen to the digital version where you actually get both channels. But anyway, appropriate surgery. Uh, definitely check this guy out. Really great stuff. All right, next we got a tape. Oh, <laughs> what do you know? By uh, developer. I he doesn't really title any of his tapes, as far as I can tell. Um, I think he just titles it based on like the what, what's it called like the code for the label or whatever so like this is on repentance products so I'm pretty sure the title is just like RP006 um, basically untitled but yeah um, got this kind of nostalgic photo collage right there uh, developer is just like a cut up noise project um, you know the, the genre of like cut up harsh noise is one of my favorite uh, genres, I would say, of subgenres or whatever of noise, and he does it really well. Um, this tape isn't amazing, it's not the best stuff I've heard from him, but it's still really solid cut of noise, so if you like that style, um, I imagine you'd like this. And yeah, Developer just does it really well, just really f spastic, um, fast-paced, constantly varying um, sort of collage cut-up stuff. So, cool tape there, and then uh, it's a very heavy paper. That sort of thing. So, so I think it's just like C20 type of thing, but yeah, it's pretty good. All right, and then here I got uh, the last, or at least one of the couple last uh, facial mess tapes. So, facial mess again, more more cut up harsh noise. Um, one of my favorite noise artists in general, and probably the probably the best cut up noise artist, honestly, I've heard. Maybe not, but it's close. Um, depends on what you define as cut up noise, I guess, but. Uh, yeah, he's just a stable for the that style, I would say. And this is his final tape um, under that name. And he changed his, his uh, project name then to Like Weeds, uh, the debut tape of that I also have, and I will show in a minute. But um, yeah, so this is released on Bacteria Field, which is known for uh, their, their uh, pretty gross cover art. <laughs> I guess it's like a dead guy on here. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it could be a lot grosser than this, so I'm fine that it's just, you know, something like that. But, anyway, Eastern View is the name of the tape. Um, just like a, you know, C20 type of thing. I don't know, it's, it's good. It's really good. Uh, kind of what you'd expect from Facial Mess, I would say. Um, some, like, dark ambient, reverby type stuff with blasts of harsh noise coming in from the different stereo channels and that sort of thing. So, yeah... Um, get a track list there, and uh, a bit of a bit of a collage type thing. So, yeah, um, I realized that he actually put this as well as his other last like t 
tapes on Spotify um, after I bought this. So that's kind of annoying, but whatever. It's still cool to have the tape, and I think the tape still brings a kind of quality to it that Spotify doesn't have. I don't know if it's better or worse, but it sounds a bit different at least. So yeah, anyway. Facial Mess always delivers solid stuff, so I would recommend this. All right, and then this is something I just kind of picked up blindly, uh, just because I figured it looked like something I would like. Um, it's basically a split between Failed and Old Sow, and um, both of the tracks are rehearsal demos, so I figured it'd just be like really lo-fi, raw, just like metal, punk, hardcore, something like that. Um, and yeah, that's basically what it is. Uh, kind of hard to, to classify what actual genres these are in. Um, I don't know, maybe there's not genres I'm too familiar with, but anyway, I got number 20 out of 50 for some reason on the tape. Uh, I guess the, the record store that I got this from said, for fans of Mortician, Greg Allman, XTC. And I looked those guys up, and they all seem completely different genre-wise, so... And, and not even similar to the stuff on here, so I don't know what that's about. <laughs> but, anyway. Um, yeah, so this is just a generic store-bought cassette type thing. Um, the failed side is my favorite of the two. Um, it's, I almost want to say it's like metalcore, uh, but a really like lo-fi sort of, I don't know, I guess kind of simple, but still really well played and, and well made uh, metalcore sort of. It's just like, you know, it has elements of hardcore, it has elements of metal, so I'm just gonna call it metalcore, I don't know. But it's, it's the good kind, I would say. Um, so yeah, really good stuff there. Um, I want to show the, uh, this thing kind of folds out into all this artwork which is pretty cool. So there's this guy with like stuff coming out of his mouth and then you know people people drowning there. So pretty nice artwork. Um, yeah and then the uh, the old south side I don't like quite as much. It's sort of like uh, I guess it's like doom metal, sludge metal, that sort of thing. Um, but it's I guess pretty slow and droney at times. But I don't know, it just kind of loses my attention and it's kind of boring occasionally but yeah, the failed side at least is really good, so nice stuff. And this is another tape I got from the same store, just again because it looked kind of cool. And I think I looked it up and saw that it was just like an ambient thing. I couldn't find any other information about it, so I just figured I'd get it. It was cheap. Um, so this is Headdress with the album Warsaw. Uh, it has this sort of vaporwave style artwork here, which I very much enjoy. Um, it's released on Finery, I guess. So, yeah, this is a, it's a really long album. Um, according to Rate Your Music, it's like 76 minutes. It didn't feel quite that long when I listened, but it did feel pretty long, so I believe it. Um, kind of a blank, oddly colored cassette shell there. Um, oh yeah, I never actually used the download code. Hmm. You know what? Here you go. <laughs> you guys can use it if you want. If anyone wants to download this, there you go. Just go to bandcamp, finery.bandcamp.com slash yum. And uh, you can you can download that. I'm not like a huge fan of this. So I don't really feel the need to download it. Um, it's pretty good though. So here's here's the like track list. I don't know if you can see any of that, but um, so it says he uses like modular synthesizer, guitar, cassettes, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, it's just like it's just ambient music. I mean, the first couple of tracks are like really minimal, dark ambient techno sort of, and then the rest is just kind of straight up ambient, um, some sort of darker stuff. But I think it's pretty melodic too. Uh, yeah, I mean, there are good moments for sure, um, but it, it's a little bit too long, and it's a little bit just like, you know, by the books ambient music, like there's nothing really too special about it, but if you're just looking for background ambience, it's definitely good. Alright, then here's the Lake Weeds thing that I mentioned earlier. So, this is the album They Grow. Um, yeah, it's just the new, the new Facial Mess project, basically. Uh, he changed his name, I guess, because he didn't like the old name, understandably so. Um, and Like Weeds They Grow is a reference to the track Like Weeds from the band His Hero Is Gone, which is a really good cross-punk band that I would recommend. Um, I guess he likes it as well. And yeah, uh, I mean it's kind of more of the same, but it's a bit of a different style of uh, sort of dark ambient bass with like cut-up noise blasts on top. Um, yeah, that's, that's the general idea. Uh, the, the the noise blasts over top sounded a little bit more electronic this time around, like like it's just sourced electronically, like from synths or something, which I generally don't like as much. But it sounds kind of cool in this situation. Like the sound design is sort of interesting and like nothing I've really heard before quite quite like it. So um, that's pretty neat. 
Yeah, I mean, it's a solid, sort of interesting cut up noise type project. So, yeah. I don't know what else to say about it, but I'm looking forward to the future of this project and just seeing what else he does with this new alias. Alright, and then we got this thing. This is a duct taped tape. Um, it's entirely, <laughs> it's entirely duct taped, which is kind of cool. Neat packaging, I would say. Uh, this is a Macronympha tape. It has this, like, thing that comes with it. So it's just this blank white tape. Then it has this thing that's just drawn on with marker. So this is uh, Silver Eye Remix. So, from what I can tell, the first side is a live track. It says Stella Romer Live. And then just Stella Remix for the, the B-side. So I guess it's like a live performance and then a remix version of that live performance, I believe. So, um, th they don't sound too different though, honestly. Like, they, they're, they're both just kind of solid uh, chunks of harsh noise. I don't know. Uh, there's some sort of bloopity, lasery type of sounds going on, but better than normal noise laser sounds sound, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's solid, it's, it's good. Macronifa rarely disappoint. They are one of my favorite harsh noise artists, or groups, or whatever. And, um, yeah, they just, they know how to make a really good, uh, solid wall of harsh noise. And, uh, they are just kind of masters at just pure noise. So, yeah, I mean, it's a solid tape. It's not the best I've heard from them, but it's definitely good. All right, next is this guy. This is uh, Plagues with Live Rituals. So Plagues is a power electronics artist that I discovered um, kind of recently, and he definitely caught my ear because of how similar he sounded to Prurient, who is my favorite noise, power electronics, whatever, just one of my favorite artists in general. Um, he really does the whole melodic but harsh and blown out kind of power electronics thing really well. Um, pretty much just as well as Prairie does, honestly, as far as that straight up style of just like looping kind of synth melodies and and uh, just having a bunch of noise and screaming over top. Um, and this is honestly one of the best things I've heard from him. I mean, it's live recordings, so like the quality is variable, but it doesn't really matter. You can still hear everything that's going on and you know, that just adds to the harshness and the, the noise aspect of everything. So this is cool, like, uh, fiery kind of sticker on there. And, uh, I think it's like a whole hour, like, C60 type of thing. So, plenty of material. Uh, there's like five tracks, I guess, from five different live shows. Um, so, yeah, you just got some pictures of him doing things. Um, this sort of abstract stuff going on here. It's, it's, it's a really good tape. Like, it's, it's Prurient Warship. I mean, it's like, you know, Cocaine Death, uh, type Prurient stuff, really. Um, just these melodic and sort of pleasure ground, that sort of thing. With these melodic loops, really blown out, harsh noise over top, and, uh, just screaming. But it's done really well, and it's done just as well as a lot of that Prurient stuff. So, I'm just happy to have more of that style, and yeah, definitely Plagues is, uh, someone to look out for if you like that type of thing. Alright, next is the Recycled Tape from Wilt. Um, Wilt is sort of a dark ambient noise project. Um, he's, you know, he's collaborated with Purry and a bunch of other people, and uh, just is generally a pretty established figure within the underground noise scene, but he generally does more dark ambient type of stuff, rather than, like, straight up noise. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, this is my first Recycled Tape I've gotten. Uh, if you don't know about the Recycled series, it's this thing that, uh, Ron from RRR Records um, was doing, where basically just, like, almost every single noise artist has one of these, and they basically just take an old, an old tape of, like, just old random music, and then just kind of re-record their own stuff over it, so sometimes the original material will bleed through or something. Uh, that doesn't really happen on this, but side A is Wilt stuff, I think it's about a half hour of, uh, Wilt material, and then side B is, like, I think, <laughs> I think, uh, my, my dad figured out that it's, like, a solo project from the dude from Clearance Clearwater Revival, so it's just, like, old kind of funk rock stuff. That's probably not the right genre, but, yeah, uh, not really that type of music, but it's kind of funny to, uh, see that contrasted with just, like, the terrifying dark ambient weirdness on the Wilt side, so, yeah, you know, that sort of thing. It's got pretty cool artwork, actually, in the, uh, center here. I really want to bend this because it's like duct tape shut but kind of cool cool stuff you can see that so yeah um 
it's it's kind of interesting and weird dark ambient like he uses guitar at one point like electric guitar and just kind of does like just abstract guitar soloing and but in like a dark ambient fashion it's very strange um i can't say i love it through and through but there are definitely some really cool moments and some really solid just dark ambience throughout um yeah i mean it's, it's interesting and kind of weird but very cool all right and then i got this tape from work death work slash death called the approach um i got this because i got the tape uh to the hills of altadena before uh also from work death and i really love that tape it's really really beautiful um ambient drone type stuff um it's it's like tim hecker but with less variation more just focused on like the drone uh and yeah it's just really really beautiful uh stuff and i love that and i just figured oh more work, work death i could get more of that uh I guess this is like his earlier work, so it's it's not that, it's not, um, it's still sort of drony. it still has a drone element, but it's much more noise focused, um, much less harmonic and melodic. So yeah, I'm actually not really a fan of this, um, it's just got kind of this crumbly, rumbly, like industrial sort of clanky sounds, but it just kind of does the same thing throughout the whole thing, and it's just very like lo-fi and not really, not too gripping. Um, and just kind of boring overall, just kind of like bleh sounding. Um, so yeah, not, not, not a huge fan, but you know, it's not terrible either. Uh, so that's that. It says, waiting and patience never come. Apparently this is the second edition. I don't know why they printed this twice, but yeah. Um, kind of cool, like waxy green paper that this comes on. So there's all that. Um, yeah. I, I don't know why. It says, like, Greh Holger, Kate Bush, Roger Stella. Like, some of these are noise artists, and then some of them is just, like, Kate Bush. Like, what? <laughs> and then a couple other dudes. Like, I don't know. I don't know why it says all, all those names. I don't know what they have to do with anything. Um, but there's that. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Just kind of all this waxy, green, weird paper. So anyway. Yeah. Not, not a huge fan of this, but... It's alright. Um, but yeah, he has much better stuff. I definitely recommend it to the Hills of Altadena for some great ambient drone stuff. But not the approach so much. Alright, and then finally, the last tape I'm going to show in this video is uh, the, the weirdly packaged one. Uh, there's a bunch of these at Skeleton Dust, and I just figured I had to get at least one of them. Um, I mean, I got the you know duct tape tape, which is kind of cool. But I just really liked the art on this one, so I decided to get it. And also, Luke said it's a just good music in general so yeah it's like beehives that have been like morphed and liquefied or something uh with some editor so it looks really cool um i just really like the art on this and yeah the tape's just kind of like sitting there so basically eh, you just have to like do that and get it out so this is uh this comes with this little thing so this is lavas magmas basically lava and magma but with an s at the end of each word and the tape is called Phantom Limb. Um, yeah, that's, that's all it really says there. But ugh, here is the tape. Pretty cool. Um, it's like drone, basically, would be, the, would be the main genre, I would say. Uh, so the side A is more kind of just like tonal, um, kind of like blissful, just drones, just like really intense kind of... Uh, yeah, just like tonal drones, and then, uh, there's, but there's like noise elements worked in, a lot of like synth bloopage and stuff like that going on, and then side B is more, more noisy, more just like a straight up noise affair, but still with kind of those droney, um, washed out elements to it, I don't know, yeah, it's pretty cool, I, I really enjoyed it actually, it's a really solid drone, drone release, so, Lavas Magmas, alright, well that's it. Um, yeah, I was going to show a bunch of CDs, but the only CDs that I got were from uh, Henry from Pennsylvania Hypno Center when he sent me all my tape, um, all the copies of my tape. Uh, he also sent a bunch of CDs, which is really nice of him. I appreciate that. But uh, I haven't actually gotten <laughs> done listening to all of them just because there's so much material on them, just so much noise, it's hard to get through all of that too quickly. But um, yeah, and also it's just like, I don't know, I don't, I don't feel the need to really show off too many of them. They're kind of s simple packaging and all that, nothing really too interesting to look at, so, well, except for one of them, but whatever. Uh, yeah, so, anyway, 
that's that's that. Hope you enjoyed the video. Those are my tapes. Um, <laughs> See ya.